Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. I promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. <laughs> And welcome. You are tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on KCAA, NBC News Radio, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere, including but not limited to iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, Audible, and more. And... For those of you who are just coming upon this by accident, there is no accident. Hashtag Naxidentally tuned in to a show about hope and happiness. So if you're here to find out how you can feel better about your life, about the world, about where you are right now, then you're in the right place. If you're tuned to listen to angry rhetoric and whining and moaning and complaining, this is not the show for you. So be warned. The warning label is hopefully at the end of this hour every morning at 8 a.m. Pacific time here in Southern California that you will hear something that will actually make you feel better because I want you to be 88% happy. And I'm on an 88, happy 88 mission, which means 88 million more happy people in the next eight years. It used to be 8 million, but I upped the number because uh, when I was on book tour with my number one bestseller, Eight Ways to Happiness from Wherever You Are, I actually reached uh, over 6 million already with a couple of big events, one in China on a a big TV platform at Sejuan Radio TV, as well as being interviewed by Karen Davila on ABS CBN, the number one news TV channel. Uh, that uh, uh, was a wonderful interview on her show. Um, she's known as the Philippine Oprah, by the way. <laughs> and I am no thanks to my big brother, Michael Bernard Beckwith, who introduced me to Oprah as the Asian Oprah, that is my honorable moniker. And I am here uh, to answer first a question of the day. Actually, before we get to the question of the day, I always like looking up the day and finding out what's special about Wednesday, September the 8th, especially since eight is my favorite number. And if you're wondering why there's so many eights, uh, if you are streaming this on my YouTube channel, which comes on, uh, live every morning at eight when this show comes on. If you're streaming on the AM in your car, uh, you'll see that I am not Swedish, but I'm Chinese. And in Mandarin, eight is a lucky number. It's a homonym for good fortune, which is why I love eights. And September 8 is actually International Literacy Day, which I absolutely love. And uh, if you are a person that complains about what's going around you and you know how to read, I hope you feel good. The fact that you actually can read because there are many people on the planet who don't, who, who do not have the luxury of being able to read either from a literacy standpoint or from, uh, eyesight. So another thing to be grateful for, uh, September 8th is also national actors day. So, uh, kudos to my uh, girlfriend, past guest, Tawana Floyd. She's an actress. My other satellite sister, good friend, Akuyo Graham, is an actress. Uh, I want to celebrate and give kudos to the amazing Asian actors in uh, Shang-Chi, the uh, Marvel movie that I got to see yesterday. Absolutely. Hashtag Asian pride. If you haven't seen it, it is if you look at it, it's like, wow, that's a long movie, but action packed from the get go. And it truly is. It has great messages in there underlying kudos to uh, Academy Award winning director, Chloe, 
Chloe's also my daughter's name, so special, special uh, uh, love there. It was an amazing movie. So uh, go see the the newest Marvel action um, uh, superhero who's Asian movie, and uh, kudos to all of the actors there. Of course, Aquafina is amazing. If if you anyone is listening to this and knows her and she wants to come on my show, I'd love to have her. Any of the actors on uh, that particular show, just amazing. So National Actors Day, it is also Natch, uh, International uh, Pediatric Hematology Oncology Nurses Day. So thank you for all that you do on the front line, all healthcare workers. And in order to honor you, I actually posted uh, on my Facebook a message directly from a nurse in Florida who just is pleading with us to do what we can to avoid having to see her, which is, and she states, vaccines, take the political out of it for for your health sakes. Um, masking, social distancing, please, 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 if we're going to honor, if we really want to honor our healthcare workers, you know, cut them some slack and give them a break and stay out of the hospital. Do what you can for your health. Okay. And then finally, it's National Star Trek Day. So I'm going to give a shout out to my nephew, who uh, some of you know, he's at, he was actually Ensign Kim on the Voyagers. So Yay, kudos to family. Garrett Wong is his name. So there you go for September 8th. And now we're going to get into the question of the day, which turned into a question of the week and now is question of the month, which is how do I feel better about who I am and what I do? And so I am here, the new tool for Happy 88. If you're not feeling good right now, then I'd like you to just consider the tool called INTBOAD. It's not that big of a deal. A lot of the times we rob ourselves from unhappiness, or sorry, rob ourselves from happiness by choosing to focus on those people, places, and things that make us unhappy. So when someone says something to you, you may be ruminating about it. I'm, I'm actually in this situation where someone said something not nice to me and I want to react and I want to get on a high horse and I want to prove or um, I have something that is being sent to me. I have no idea if it's good, bad or indifferent and my mind wants to, you know, circumvent what that is and, and make a case that I was not wrong or that, uh, you know, this was a, a wrong being done to me. And there's really no point because I N T B O A D. It's not that big of a deal in the mm -hmm. scheme of things. Interactions with people that are petty are exactly that. They are petty interactions with petty people. And I don't want to be a petty person. So I choose to apply one of my best problem solving techniques called neglect. <laughs> we are so tuned into uh, uh, knee jerking and becoming a jerk in our reactions that we think we can wrestle something to the ground and fix it. And oftentimes, especially if it's with an interaction with someone else that you cannot control, then neglect and not thinking about it and not ruminating about it and not jumping on it or, or, or tearing it apart or trying to put it back together, just leave it alone. My other favorite uh, tool in this is called just don't poke the animal. <laughs> just don't go there. So if you are in that situation right now, and, uh, I have a very active imagination. So I call it going to MSU university, making shiitake up. I can take something that I don't really know what the answer is to, or I really don't know what's going on. And I can actually <laughs> make it into something that it's not. So drop out of MS University. So 
Those are your two tools for today. Hopefully they will help you to be happier for the rest of this day. Because why are we here? What is the meaning of life? Why, why are we on this planet anyways? Well, my answer is to feel good. We're here to feel good. And I don't mean feel good in a way that hurts other people. I'm talking about just feeling good about ourselves, about what we're doing, about where we are. And we can't do that if we don't like ourselves. Fundamentally, mental health comes from a great relationship with ourselves. So do you like yourself? Do you like yourself 88% of the time? Because if you don't like yourself 88% of the time, how the fork do you expect anybody else to like you? <laughs> and that and we're seem, we seem to be consumed with that. How many likes are we getting? Literally. But really, can I in this moment, and I'm going to take a breath. <sighs> soft shoulder, soft elbow, soft knees. Another deep breath in. Releasing all of those crazy voices about what's going on that I don't like or who doesn't like me. And one last deep breath in. Connecting with life with a capital L. Connecting with me. Do I like me? Mm, yeah. 88% of the time. And if you don't, um, well, there's lots of things you can do. You can, <laughs> of course, work through my book, Eight Ways to Happiness. It's not written as a psychologist telling you how to be happy. It's written from someone who was extremely unhappy. So I have exercises in there that I promise if you do, you will never hate yourself the same way again. Work with me. You know, I don't try to fix my own car. Uh, my way is not the only way, but I do know that people who coach with me uh, in eight weeks can find relief because I give you tools like I'm giving you over the air every single day that are free. <laughs> and you can go to my YouTube channel, free subscribe and get every single tool every single day. Uh, but uh, I am definitely, I want you to be happy. I want you to be 88% happy because the more happy people we have, the more solutions we'll have, the less problems we'll have, and we'll all really enjoy this thing called life because we can't get this time back. We're, there's no do-overs, and I want you to have claim to your birthright to be happy 88% of the time. All right, there's your PSA for a happy life. And we'll be back with more of Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It, Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa, The Morning Show. When we come back, I've got my What's Right with the World section, What's Up Doc, where I have Dr. Marissa reporting live. I have some politicians, Kevin DeLeon, uh, Miguel Santiago, and a spotlight interview with uh, the the CEO of a great organization that I just found when I covered the news uh, to yesterday um, and it, about trash cleanup in downtown LA. And they're called Urban Alchemy. And I got a, a great interview with what they do and, and they are nonprofits. So come back and enjoy that interview and more here on a station that leaves no listener behind KCAA and Dr. Marissa reporting live. Back Your Life with Dr. Marisha Pay. And we're back. You're tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on KCAA, NBC News Radio, 
AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. You can go to kcaaradio.com, hit the Listen Now button. You can go to my YouTube if you're a visual person and actually watch and listen at the same time. And if you free subscribe, you'll get a notification every morning at eight weekdays so that you can tune in to this show and learn about more how you can be happy. Now, as promised, I'm showing you what's right with our community with a spotlight interview with some things that have happened in our community, not just on Labor Day, but beyond so that you can be part of the solution and hashtag be the change. Hope you enjoy them. We'll be right back. Enjoy. When you look at the trash behind you or you look at the trash all around you in a community, trash tells a story. It tells a story about how people care for their community and how a community is functioning. We want to tell a different story. We want to tell a story of a clean community where community members are employed and contribute to their family and their community by cleaning up this trash. And hopefully, over time, as it becomes more and more clean, there's going to be more of a stigma against and, and hopefully more of a, of, a, of a negative feeling against businesses and other people who so carelessly leave trash out on the street and in essence trash our community. So I just want to say how grateful I am to be a part of this effort along with other nonprofit organizations and um, you know Urban Alchemy is really looking forward to transforming this community. Thank you so much. Good morning, this is Dr. Marissa reporting live. You know me as the Asian Oprah, and I cover things that are good with the community, what's going on that's good with the world. And I have someone here who is just at a press conference in Boyle Hut, downtown LA, and she's part of the cleanup of the trash. So could you introduce yourself and tell me what you're doing here? My name is uh, Dr. Lena Miller. I'm the CEO of Urban Alchemy. We also have Voltaire Williams, who uh, oversees the uh, Cooling stations and Skid Row and uh, James, who oversees the uh, Circle program, and Michael, who oversees the uh, cleaning program in Skid Row CD14, and Michelle Gutierrez, who also works in the CD14 cleanup program. So we're very happy to be here today and expand the program to this to this area, CD14 in Boyle Heights. So your job is to clean up trash, clean up what uh, people who don't care about the community. I love what you said in the press conference. This is a, an effort spearheaded by my favorite politicians, Miguel Santiago and Kevin De Leon. And um, you were saying this is part of the pride of the community. When you see trash, you cannot be proud of the community. So is it inside or outside of the community that is the issue? Well, I think it's both. Like like the councilman said, people come from outside to dump. You know, a lot of times when people see the trash, you just assume that that's, that's the product of this particular community. But instead, people see a community that is a little more economically depressed, and they feel like it's okay to dump more stuff on it. But it, I think it is part of the community's responsibility to stand up and really take responsibility and not only clean, but report dumpers and let people know that this day is over when you dump in our community. So I think it does take both. If we don't do it, who is? Right, right. So you, we have to start. Beautiful. And how can the, the community and outside the community, how can we support all of these efforts? You're a nonprofit, right? Yes, we are. Okay. So. Uh, well, I think it's also reporting people who dump, letting people know that it's not okay speaking up and then you know reporting when there is trash and helping uh groups like urban alchemy really look after the community and and, and pick up trash when you see it if it makes sense or at least showing us where there's hot spots so we can do it yeah but yeah. collectively having all eyes on it and all all hands on deck yeah i don't know michael you have any you do this every day so you tell me what are your thoughts my thoughts is uh we there for the community and me personally, I like doing the job because I like giving back. And uh, my team is the uh, LA Clean team, and we do some just skid rope. And uh, 
I, I, it feels rewarding for me to, to go out there and clean. Oh, there's a bunch of them all because, you know, I just like it. Right. And they gave I, me an opportunity to, to uh, do something positive for the community. Fantastic. I kind of thought, just your reaction to this, the relationship between this and homelessness. So what if homeless had some compensation to clean up trash in and around where they are and then you're laughing. Okay, so not a good uh, idea? No, no, no. I'm <laughs> laughing because that's what we do. We, oh, we hire many people experiencing homelessness. Particularly in Skid Row and now when we move over here, we always prioritize hiring people from the community. Particularly people experiencing homelessness. So Urban Alchemy really hits a, a, at least a double bottom line. Right. So all the money that we get to clean up, not only is it going to clean up, but it's also going to to uh, support jobs. And these are real jobs. These are uh, right. with, with living wage yeah. and benefits and dental Fantastic. vision, the whole, the whole nine. Okay, so, and because of that, I'm going to give you Dr. Marissa's Beneficial Sessions on the Planet Award. Which I don't give to everybody, but I, that's fantastic. Thank you. Well, I think is that what it's about? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Think first of all. Well, you got the money behind you, but this is what I do on every show at the end. If you can all do it with me, it's called Peace In, Peace Out, World Peace, through Inner Peace. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you for being my cameraman. The reason why I picked Urban Legend, actually there were three uh, organizations that won that bid and they were all great, but she caught me in her presentation with the word grateful. And you know me, <laughs> I'm a grateful junkie. I believe that it is the number one easiest way to feel good about your life is to be grateful because everyone has something to be grateful for. And that's why I gave her Dr. Marissa's Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award. And yes, it is. It's time to exercise your ability to be part of and use your energy about things that you believe in and don't believe in to vote. Yes, this is Dr. Marissa's PSA, it is time. Uh, you, it's easier than ever. Uh, if you got, uh, if you're registered and got something in the mail that has the scan bar, it's easier than ever to vote. And right now, especially when there's so many, uh, forking stupid, <laughs> ask me what my opinion is on voter suppression. Uh, <laughs> we have to get out there and vote. So please use your democratic right to vote now. We need to make sure that our governor is not recalled. We need to make sure that ethnic studies are okay in school. We need to make sure that uh, there is no voter suppression. So you know what you need to do. Please, please, please don't say somebody else will do it. Every vote counts. I take voting very seriously. Uh, those of you who don't already know, I was born in Canada. So I made a choice to give up that citizenship to become an American and was in the first group after 9-11. So I take my right to vote very seriously. I hope you do too. Please, please, please go and vote. And when we return, we're gonna come back with a spotlight interview. Today we are highlighting, because it is National Actors Day, another actor that I got to uh, uh, highlight on my show. His name is Thomas Beard. He was on Young and the Restless for a long time. And so uh, I had a great interview with him and maybe a little insight into uh, why, it is, why is it that actors seem to have this amazingly creative side of them, which sometimes seems to be tied to a, uh, a darker side. So when we come back, that's my Spotlight interview for the day. I hope you enjoy it. Don't go away. This is Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind.
Back Your Life with Dr. Marisha Pay. And welcome back. You're tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on KCAA and NBC News Radio and CNBC News Radio Station, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Spreaker, Amazon Music, Audible, and more. And of course, on my YouTube channel, free subscribe there. You'll get all of my past 528 shows and 489 consecutive weeks on the air. I'm so grateful for all the support that I get. Thank you so much to the guys, uh, Rick in the Morning, uh, Mark Westwood, Fred Lundgren, Mike Lundgren, and all the guys at the station who help me stay in your face and in your ear on how to be uh, happy 88% of the time. And as promised before the break, I'm going to spotlight on National Actors Day, an actor that I had the pleasure to interview a little bit ago, uh, who was introduced to me by my, one of my favorite publicists, Harlan Bull. Uh, shout out to you. And when we return, uh, I have a couple of uh, things. One is an Asian Oprah giveaway, so don't go away. Enjoy the interview. That great show with another great guest today. You may recognize him, especially if you, like me, watch The Young and the Restless, uh, one of my favorite uh, college time uh, soap operas. He's an award-winning actor, best known for his portrayal of the legacy character Philip Chancellor III on the daytime dra drama The Young and the Restless. Thomas Beers is a filmmaker, a writer, and a fine artist, and he's releasing his newest book, The Young and the Gay and restless this week so please welcome to the studio thomas beards <laughs> hello hey Marissa, how you doing i am happy and grateful so glad to have you with me peace and peace out to harlan for another great guest that he keeps supplying me with and you my sir have such an uh, doing the research i was like really could anything else happen to you? So let's start with, uh, let's start with, I think for me, the most fascinating is you are a hunk. You're a hunk on the show. You had, you were the heartthrob of so many people. And yet you say that you were looking for love in all of the wrong places. So let's start with that one. Well, uh, all right. I mean, uh, I'm just going to freeform thoughts here. Yes, please. Uh, I grew up in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, Midwest, Catholic. I knew I was gay very early, and uh, that was not appreciated <laughs> back then. I back bet. There. I you bet. Know, a long time ago, there was a lot of shaming. And so, of course, I grew up uh, thinking that I was bad, very uh -huh. bad. Mm -hmm. But at uh, I came out at 18 after writing a letter to God saying, God... Uh, I'm, I'm going to be an important gay man. If gay's bad, kill me in my sleep. And I woke up and I thought, well, okay. God didn't kill me, so I'm okay. And then I started bartending in gay bars in Milwaukee when I was 19. That was a drinking age then. Uh -huh. I saved money and I moved to Hollywood at 21. At 24, I got the Young and the Restless playing the uh, part of Philip Chancellor. And all of a sudden, I went from this shy kid to on stage with thousands of girls screaming for me. And they said, you got a boyfriend, do you have a girlfriend? And I said, no, I didn't say I had a boyfriend, you know, I was just mm -hmm. trying to uh, avoid the question, yeah. trying to have integrity, but uh, essentially I couldn't. And uh, it took me to 2009 when I came back on the soap opera, making history as the first uh, gay actor hired in a principal role on a soap opera looking at my dog here, uh, <laughs> that uh, I was able to make a huge arc, mm. you know, and finally come out and say, it doesn't matter if you understand or get my sexuality. I'm here and I'm, I'm doing something that I think is important. Yes. So, I don't yes. think that answered your question. No, it did. did. It did. Because the, the my follow-up question was, tell me how it all started. So you just read my mind because that's uh -oh. usually the first question I ask. So it mm -hmm. came from a, a, an early I'm not okay 
it came from an early I'm not good enough, which is a, a very common uh, for anyone that is not mainstream, right? There's I'm something. Sure I'm not sure of that because I okay. remember six years old watching TV thinking, oh, I want to be that. However, I didn't want to be an actor. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a movie star. So, yes, I think there was some overcompensation I was looking for. Okay, right, yeah. right. Because you've had some classic. What kind class of doctor are you? <laughs> I'm sorry? What kind of doctor are you? I'm not an MD. I'm a PhD. Okay. So in, in organizational psychology. So okay. you know what PhD stands okay. for, right? Excellent. Yeah, it's piled higher and deeper. So it really doesn't mean anything. So, <laughs> right. so okay. So in fact, when you were bartending, you almost became a victim of Jeffrey Dahmer. Could have happened. Could have happened. I was bartending Bartending at Club 219 in my cowboy hat with a little mustache, <laughs> uh, 19 years old. And yeah, that's one of the places Jeffrey Dahmer would frequent and find victims and kill them. I think he killed 17 wow. young men. Yeah. And at one point, uh, my lover uh, was this big, masculine, hairy dude that worked the basement bars, the basement bar. And a psychic voice said to him, there's a serial killer in your presence. Hmm. And he looked around, and it was just his customer, Jeffrey. It didn't dawn on him until years later when he saw the news that, oh, my God. Wow. The voice told him that the serial killer was right there. Wow. And he was guilty about it. But what do you do? Right, so, right, well, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that I never went home with him. Yeah, I'm glad too. <laughs> you, would, <laughs> you wouldn't been here. <laughs> and right. if you're just tuning in and you're wondering who I get to talk to today, it is Thomas Beards, who you will recognize as Philip Chancellor from The Young and the Restless. And he's here to talk and help with sexual healing with Dr. Marissa. Uh, he uh, was born in a a place where uh, being gay was not okay and dealing with that as well as uh, you know the, the you've had some uh, I think I read Harlan put down that you've had quite a bit of plastic surgery now that was also in uh, an effort to look okay yeah I never liked the way I looked I was I thought it was too skinny but TV added weight, especially back then. Mm -hmm. So I looked good on screen. But when I would go to these appearances, these girls would say, you look bigger on screen. And I was like, oh, I know. Damn it. Yeah. You know, so, so when I turned 30, I left the soap opera to be a movie star, to be Tom Cruise. Didn't happen. Uh, but at 30, I had some money and I, I did some surgeries. I wanted to make my face look wider. So I got some silicone here and I got my ears pinned back. I had a chin implant, which looked horrible because my chin goes out when I smile. So we put that back in. I had lipo. And the doc I was dealing with had been pretty uh, premier at penile uh, operations. And I decided I wanted some fat from here put in my penis. And uh, I don't regret it at all. It uh, straightened <laughs> it out. It added some girth and it added some width. But I never mentioned it to anybody, not even my lovers, until I decided to write this book. Yes. So I'm coming out with all kinds of uh, secrets I... because as you feel, shaming is negative. Yes. Uh, repression is nonproductive. I'm all about let's just put it all out there and we can't hate each other. We can't judge each other for taboo fantasies and stuff if we don't hurt people. Right. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I love the way that uh, you say, you know, it is, it's an inside out, You, it's about loving yourself. It's less about what people think about you as what you think about yourself. And Don't that, you have a book, something about yourself? Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. Well, but what is that? Exactly. That, I don't know. I heard a little bit about it. It's eight ways to happiness from wherever you are, and I swear to you guys, I did not put them up to this to, to give no, you a didn't. commercial. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Bestseller, and I'm like, well, I got to ask her about it. I well, that's know. so sweet of you, darling. But this is about <laughs> you. People want to hear about you, so let's go back to you. And what 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 I was just heartbroken to hear something that you've had to deal with that not many people in life have ever had to deal with this kind of a situation and you and that was actually the subject of your first book your brother 
um, murdered your mother. And I, I can't even imagine or put my arms around to how do you deal with that? So let's talk about that. How did she deal with it? I can deal with it okay. I've always believed in life after death. But, you know, that's one reason that I, I'm, I frown on having kids and I'm for abortion. I'm for it. Because, uh, you know, why saddle yourself with a dependent that you may not want and that may not want you? You know, I'm glad, you know, that I never had kids or anything. I've got dogs. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, my mother, uh, from the time she was 19 to her death at 49, all she did was take care of her kids. Mm -hmm. Dad left, and she was a mother working several jobs. And, unfortunately, my... My youngest brother, Troy, he killed her. Uh, we didn't know if he was paranoid schizophrenic. She had taken him to 40 doctors for analysis and and, hope, and help. Mm. And most of them said, no, we don't think so. We think he's just a jerk. We think he's being mean intentionally. Mm. She found a book under his bed about paranoid schizophrenia, but didn't know if he was f trying to fake it uh -huh. or if he was trying to research himself. She knew that he was going to kill somebody and that he wanted to kill her. In Hollywood, I didn't know that. Mm. And I didn't believe that. So when he did, of course, it was, it, it was incredibly surprising to us all. And he was the first person in Wisconsin to be sentenced with life meaning life, which means life for 50 years. And uh, the reason I wrote Forgiving Troy is because I found my way back in an unbelievable way, five years after he killed her, to his prison to help him. Mm. And what I found was not this mean brother who wanted to kill me, who was a black belt, who could have killed me, but this non-existent soul, mm. just uh, mm. blabbering, making no sense, and gone. Mm. So whether he was schizophrenic when he killed mom or not, I don't know, but he certainly was when I five years later oh, wow! I became the big brother I never was. Mm. was and he was able to help me so forgiving Troy really is a, is a remarkable story wow wow I had to write, I I had to write it was just like whoa yeah yeah that is that's amazing that's amazing is he still he's still in that jail yeah, he's still in the prison in the psychiatric unit, which okay. is a good place for him. Right, right. He's got his needs met. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Do you do you see him often, or he has not been? I, I saw him often, which is a lot what the book was about. Right. But recently, no, he okay. has not uh, wanted to reach out in mm. letters or phone calls because right. he can call me. I can't call him. Right, right, but, right, right. Uh, You know, I just trust that his world is small. Yeah. And and he doesn't need me right now, so right. that's okay. Right, right. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I'm. Thank you for sharing that. And it's. I can't imagine that it's not easy. But I also. Uh, and tears are the disinfectant that keep your heart soft. So thank you for sharing your heart with me, Thomas. I always believed in life after death, Marissa. Yeah. And that totally helped me see the situation in a different way. Yep. Because yep. I saw it as, uh, you know, my mother was somewhere i didn't know where yeah and and helping him was what she would have wanted right so i did that for her mm. not for me and not for him right what benefited us right right yeah well your mom is with my dad and uh they're up there right now watching the big screen tv which is streaming us talking together <laughs> and they're cheering us on because I believe in that too. Uh, lymphoma. Yeah. And early. So actually chapter two in my book is out of loss into faith and into uh, faith. Faith. Yeah. In a friendly universe. In fact, this is a good time to give a shout out to Tony Sweet, who you've not met, but he owns this station and he is right now. I uh, just flew out last night to be with his mom, who's in hospice, who has like three days left and his heart is breaking open right now. So this How is wonderful, a, though. My favorite thing to do at night is to listen to near death experiences. There's like hundreds of them online. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm excited for her. Totally yeah. excited. 
Yeah. He's actually, ironically, Tony has a show <laughs> that uh, it, it deals exactly with that. So it's a, it's going to be a, an interesting time for him. But anyways, we're, we're sending our love out right now with a breath. Okay. And so let's get back to you. Um, you also had some experiences with the Me Too personally uh, that, uh, you know, just feed into the whole the the what's coming out the ugliness or the ugly or the dark side of Hollywood uh, being propositioned uh, my again my show is not about gossip so it's less about who and what but for someone who's been in that situation and you're advising now and mentoring people on my show who are in the industry what would you say to people who um you know, who, who feel like they don't have a choice, but they have to succumb to the advances of people who are, uh, uh, coming on to them or who are in positions of power. Uh -huh. That's an interesting question. I would say, you know, we have the technology today to do research and to find all kinds of support and people that can give you much better answers than me. But in my situation, it was kind of funny because I had a few mild sexual assaults like I was dropping a painting off at a celebrity's home and in his uh, bedroom when he was showing me the house he grabbed my crotch and and shoved his tongue in me and and held me really tight and you know I didn't I wasn't traumatized by that I was just creeped out that's <laughs> all so so I didn't think much of it I just kind of ignored it like other things but when I was 21 a photographer uh, drugged me and so uh, as I passed out, I saw him taking my pants down, and I saw him performing things on me, and I was out. Probably the only time in my life I've ever lost consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I even hit a couple cars driving in the morning on the way home. But at 21, I didn't call the cops. I didn't think, oh, this is a bad guy, or I was wronged. I thought, you know what? <laughs> He promised me headshots. Oh. So I called him up and I said, well, can we get these headshots? And I was just careful never to take a drink or a pill from him again. So in this way, I kind of relate to the Cosby accusers because even though some of them accused Bill Cosby of assault, mm -hmm. which he probably did, they some of them hung around him. And, mm -hmm. and you know, for some of my Facebook friends, especially women, are like, oh, nobody would do that. And I'm like, well, I would do that. Because that's what I did. Yeah. You know, so it's, yeah. it's interesting that we have different reactions. In fact, I'm writing another book, which will be out in a month, uh, how men really feel about sexual being sexually assaulted, which is a compilation of anonymous men's accounts and their reactions, because they're different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really interesting. Do you have a title for that book yet? Yeah, that's it. Uh, how men really feel about being sexually assaulted. Yeah, I just had that thought um, because a lot of the uh, uh, porn, not a lot, but one of the porn themes is, you know, uh, the, 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 there's something that's a turn on about Allure being, about a, being dominant. thank you, thank you. Yeah. I didn't know Absolutely. how to quite say that without getting myself in trouble. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, it's a tricky, it's a tricky thing. It definitely is a tricky thing. So you have uh, been disillusioned with Hollywood and now you live in Lake Arrowhead where actually one of my best friends used to live there. I, I meant to ask you, do you, did you ever meet Michael Maine? No. No. Okay. Anyways, he's with my dad and your mom right now, but uh, I loved him a lot. So he, um, so you live there, and now you paint, and you your your paintings have been lauded like Van Gogh, Picasso. I think I read Warhol. I mean, that's pretty amazing. We're getting some shots uh, right now. Uh, put up. I'm looking at them. They're gorgeous. So yes. to, how yeah. did that so, so how did that kid, happen? The, I was creative. In fact, I can look back at my life and and thank the universe that almost every day I created. It was usually paintings, but it could have been songs or books or something. But I've spent my whole life with no 
regrets about creating and spilling. You know, mm -hmm. I did paint live mm -hmm. in front of many events, raised a lot of money for charities, but more than off, more often than not, I paint portraits of people's grandmas and stuff like that. But I've also done expressionism stuff. Mm -hmm. There's one coming up right now that's beautiful. The colors. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I've always uh, liked to paint, and that's one reason that I love living here alone. You know, that's the best thing because I've got social anxiety, and Hollywood was hard for me because everywhere you go, there's a, there's an opportunity <laughs> to be anxious. Uh, and uh, okay. so when I moved away from people and all that. I live here in the woods with 17 windows overlooking uh, four seasons, and I am completely satisfied being by myself, mm -hmm. delivering my creative projects and making a living at it. That's, so for that, me, it works. That's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'm super glad that you, you're not so anxious that you wouldn't come and talk to me, <laughs> at least over the air. <laughs> right. I, I had asked Harlan if you were coming in the studio. He's like, oh, no, <laughs> that, that's not going to happen. So I get that now. Um, well, well, most of it is, uh, uh, you know, why drive so far when you don't have to? Right. But yeah, there's some social anxiety, and I really don't know how I will do today. I don't know mm. how I will do on a set or something because it's been so long i don't know yeah i think you do great so if you do go on set you have to come to mine first <laughs> how's that and so, where are you in los angeles is yeah i'm are? sunset gower studios oh cool right yeah right. yeah right. so so it's not too far so right. i'm getting the signal it looks like we're gonna have to take a little break for the commercials the show sponsors that make this show possible if you are someone who has a product or service or a book coming out that would like to be promoted and sponsor a show about hope and happiness uh, especially last week of the month sexual healing or the call-in shows please do contact me at drmarissa.tv and uh, we'll get you set up with a very affordable package out of your PR and marketing budget and that way we can be connected and uh, we'll just promote the heck out of you so we'll be back in two and two remember it's all about balance peace in and peace out that's world peace through inner peace and wasn't that fun those of you I, I watched the young and the restless when I was in college, although I shouldn't have said that I gave away the fact that I'm not ageless, but I hope you enjoyed that. And I am also going to be spending a quite a bit of time with not just actors and actresses, but some super cool people at an event that I'm going to later on this month. And the tickets are sold out to Secret Knock, which by the way, just got the number one place to be by Yahoo Finance. Congratulations to Dr. Greg Reed, my friend, and who uh, constantly pushes me onto his stages. And uh, I not only get to cover his red carpet this year at The Secret Knock, but I get to interview on his stage. So I'm grateful to him. I did say the tickets were sold out, but you can still join me at the soiree. And the soiree is going to be on Thursday, September the 23rd, 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. at the Viejas Indian Casino and Resort in San Diego. Super fun time you're going to have. I, we're not allowed to say who the people are, but suffice it to say that uh, in the past, I've gotten to interview the president of Mexico, of course, our beloved Frank Shankwitz, co-founder of C co-founder of Make-A-Wish Foundation, who's now on the other side, loving us from there. Uh, I've interviewed, I've had on my show, the founder of Pictionary, who I also met because of Greg, uh, Larry Namer, the co-founder of E! Entertainment. I also met uh, in Las Vegas at when they had their star down and many more. So I'm sure they're all going to be there. I'm going to be there, so please go and go to secretknox.ca and you will find the link in the index soiree so you can meet me there and have and party and have a great time and party with very, very cool people. All right. And last but not least, the Asian Oprah giveaway today is a copy of 
an audiobook copy of my best selling book, Eight Ways to Happiness, from wherever you are. The first eight people to go to drmarissa.life and put in Asian Oprah giveaway will get a free audiobook copy. Okay, because <laughs> I do want you to be happier. And that's it for today's installation of Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show, reminding you that it's all about balance. Peace in, peace out, world peace through inner peace. And of course, have the best day ever. <laughs>